Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing absolutely fine. I hope you guys are liking my Singapore series. To watch out on all the videos and the playlist, click right here. In today's episode, we're going to talk about Singapore on budget. I'm going to share with you guys my tips and tricks that helped me in my trip and also that I've learned in my trip. So without any further ado, Let's begin. Topics that I'm going to cover in this video are cheap airline tickets, how to get visa, stay in Singapore, and how to manage expenses in Singapore, and also about food. So first, let's talk about cheapest airline tickets. So this is like a very simple tip: book your tickets advance before two months at least, so that if it's an international trip or even a domestic flight, book it before two months so that you get good deal. So basically, I use Skyscanner app. to book my airline ticket and this is not at all sponsored i am hands down going back to them again and again i'm going to book my tickets from there itself because this one shows all of the prices compared to all the other websites and the apps you have in the market so we fly through scoot airlines and we have compared with skyscanner and also scoot uh, official website skyscanner has very reasonable prices compared to the official website itself so that is one of the reasons that i'm going back to skyscanner again and also my tip in this is if you take multi city trip it's going to cost you way less than if you're taking a normal trip to one city so what is a multi city trip is if you go to one city and then travel to another city and then come back so you're covering basically two countries or two cities in a one go for example if i'm traveling from hyderabad to malaysia and malaysia to bangkok and bangkok to hyderabad it's going to cost me less and i'm covering two different places all together so it's a yay you should definitely check this feature out if you don't know about this i found it recently and it was super helpful if you're going through an agency sort of an a vacation planner it's going to cost you way more than it generally does i mean you can definitely go through them it's completely up to you but it's not my preference because it's going to cost us way more than it generally costed us so if you're going through a agency you don't really need to worry about visa and all that they're going to take care of it all by travel agent company if you're going by yourself like we did you need to get your visa so for that you need to have a your your airline tickets and your insurance all that are done beforehand and they're actually important and they're not going to cost you way more i'm going to link all the you know details in the description box like what insurance we took and how much and all that stuff will be linked down so how we got the visa so we've got all the documents we need for the visa everything is so simple and we i have actually approached make my trip to do that so in make my trip there is a column called visas and there you can select singapore visa it was costing around 2000 per person it was the best i mean we had submitted all our copies we have couriered our passports to make my trip office and we have got our visas in a week so it was like hassle free stuff you can actually do it yourself but the singapore embassy is not in hyderabad it's in chennai so it's better to get through a agency just the visa so i got it through make my trip and they have done a amazing job so yay for that so now we have the airline tickets and the visa we need to talk about stay so stay comes before visa so you need to have your stay also done to get the visa approved everybody thinks getting to hotels and all that is super classy and stuff but it is very expensive as well so to get into decent house i preferred airbnb they have really nice places the location was really nice the place was really good it was really clean most of the people don't really prefer thinking it's really expensive but it's not definitely not expensive than the other hotels like luxury hotels you get you feel like you're staying in a home because it's basically people are renting out their homes uh, in airbnb it's similar to oyo rooms again and also there are like so many coupon codes online uh, for airbnb you see a lot of youtubers and bloggers have been collaborating with airbnb and they have this sort of a voucher or gift card if you use that you know you'll get some sort of a discount and actually it worked i've actually tried some youtubers uh, a reference code and i got 4000 discount so it's a definitely yeah i'm going to put my referral code over here so if you guys want to spare some bucks then you can use my code and save some bucks so now let's talk about how to manage expenses in singapore so now singapore dollar is very expensive 
compared to Indian rupees. So one Singapore dollar is equal to 52 Indian rupees, I guess. 52, 53, 54. You know, it keeps fluctuating in that area. So the food is very expensive. If you are a vegetarian, it's very hard to find. Being a non-vegetarian, we couldn't find even chicken in Singapore. They only serve pork or what sort of seafood. We actually ordered for some other dish and we get some other so it's something like that by the end of the trip we actually found this place called little india where you get all indian stuff food but quite expensive but they are really really nice if i say expensive it means one roti is 200 indian rupees so that expensive you guys i have made a complete video on what i ate in singapore so you can check this video out and some tips on expenses is do travel by public transport i am not kidding when i'm saying this we actually had a um, metro ride bus ride cab ride was way expensive than the public ride if i have to go to the airport from the place i was staying tg katong road so if i have to go from here to there it was costing us around 18 dollars and we took a bus from where we are staying it's kind of a little walk at a, around 500 meters and it cost us around four dollars that's it so you see the difference is too much and it's very expensive to take cab rides if you are like in need of it they should definitely take it but if you're generally exploring i say public transport is the best and it's really safe as well people are really helpful and you have few free rides as well so for example if you want to go uh, to universal studios you can get down at one place and get into a free ride a bus or a train it's a sky train you take either of them and it's free of course to the universal studios so yeah they have so many of these tourist stuff you should definitely check so these are the tips guys i hope this is helpful i'm gonna put the whole itinerary down below and also if you have missed watching the whole series then i'm gonna put it over here i hope you guys like it thank you so much for watching if you like you know the drill like share subscribe and all that good stuff i'll see you in my next video until then lots of love bye